All right, folks, so check it out. You guys probably saw my first video where I asked if AMD's latest Vega Frontier card could beat, you know, the top of the line Titan XP card, and the comments were kind of mixed. Now, I did that to gauge your guys' reaction on the card because like a lot of people said in the comments, yes, previously Nvidia was doing this type of thing, a dual type of mode card that could do both prosumer stuff and gaming all together. Well, you guys know it didn't really go so well for them. The cards aren't doing that anymore because you know the market's kind of weird because you're either doing pro stuff or you're doing gaming. You're not really mixing the two together. Now, I said in the video, if you know AMD had great success with this, then maybe Nvidia would change back and, and change the way they do things as well. But from what I've seen from the scores, and this is just me, you know, viewing online what other people have said, it seems like this card in gaming, and if you want to tell me this card is not meant for gaming. I'm not even going to say what I'm going to say to you because, like, basically, why is there a gaming switch on it? If it's not for gaming, why is there a gaming mode on it? Maybe it wasn't meant to be clearly for gaming, but that's pretty funny because at this point, it's actually AMD's fastest gaming card on there. You guys are seeing the scores. It's a little bit faster than a 1070, somewhere between a 1070 and a 1080. So it is slowly creeping up, you know, into NVIDIA's top of the line cards, but it's not quite there yet and it costs a lot of money. Plus, I spoke with a lot of people in the industry who do this type of thing, and they basically told me that if they're doing their their, their you know video making and doing all that stuff, they're more worried about their code and getting their code done fast and checking it out than actually playing the game. So they said for them, you know, that's kind of like something they probably would not really buy into. And I know in the last video, some people did say, hey, I'm going to buy this card right now. So. I guess today's video, I'm kind of like wondering what gauging again, once again, how you guys feel. Are you guys really going to go out and buy this card? I mean, if you have the cash, $1,500 what the card is, do you want to invest that much money in that card as a gaming card? And if you're a guy who does prosumer stuff, are you still wanting to get a Quadro or a Fire GL, which is totally dedicated to doing that type of thing? Because at this point, it's kind of a trip. It's more and it's less all at the same time. You get more options, sure, you get the options because you can have the prosumer level stuff, and we saw that it competed pretty well you know, against the Titan XP, but how's it really going to do against a $2,000 Quadro or a top of the line Fire GL card? Like those tests, I haven't actually seen popping up everywhere, and I straight up asked the people at AMD, Antal, you know, is this card in pro you know, mode like a top of the line or mid-range Fire GL, and I never got an answer. So. What I'm seeing right here is that, yeah, it's a little bit of both, but when I thought Vega was gonna come out, even though this car was kind of geared for that stuff, a gaming mode, I thought it would have at least been beating like a 1080 and getting really close to a 1080 Ti. That's what we were all expecting. I mean, when is there going to be a Vega on the market that actually beats a 1080 Ti, you know? Or beats the Titan XP, really beats it. Like out of the box, no driver issues, nothing like that whatsoever, just out of the box performance, you get it, you take it, you play it, and you're like, shazam, mother frackers, that damn thing just blew away my 1080, and wow, look at it, that's kicking butt on an XP as well. That's what I'm waiting for. Now, the RX series is going to come out for gaming, but here's my thing. If the Vega Frontier is the mothership of the Vega line, how is any of the other line of cards gonna actually be able to compete and beat Nvidia on the gaming side. You understand what I'm saying? Or it's, it's you know it's it's a logical question because if this is the top of the line bad boy, so you think they're going to release an, another RS Vega for cheaper that's going to be faster in the gaming realm? Now, sure, we all want that to happen. I want that to happen. But do you honestly see that happening? Because that's what I'm waiting for. Because at this point right now, like I said, I'm seeing a little bit more and a little bit less. More options, but less. Less gaming, less prosumer. Yes, you get the options to do both, but at the end of the day, is that what you really want? Or do you want a pure gaming card that kicks total ass that'll beat anything on the NVIDIA side and a prosumer card for the same thing? Now, I know this is a kind of niche market, like I said in the beginning. NVIDIA has tried it before. It didn't do very successfully for them. So at the end of the day, I really just want to know how many of you guys out there are going to go out and buy this card? Because like I said, if you're a pure gamer and all you care about is performance and you're not a fanboy and brand does not matter, and honestly, that's where your head should be at. There should be no fanboyism at all. I'm not a fanboy of jack shit. 
Whatever has the best performance and what it is, is what I want to use. And you should feel the same way. Like feeling go, oh, like, you know, I hate Nvidia, they're just fucking piles of shit, or I hate AMD for this. There's no reason to hate anybody. At the end of the day, man, when you go out and you buy a car, you buy anything else, and you spend your money, you buy the best bang for your buck, don't you? You don't go out and just go, you know what, wow, that, that number X t-shirt, it's like, it's like way more money, but it's less and I'm, I'm gonna buy that. No, you're gonna buy what you know is gonna get your absolute best money's worth. So why doesn't that translate over into the PC realm? I just don't understand it. Fanboys and shit, nothing to do with what you choose to buy. You should buy what works absolutely best and performs the best at the end of the day because that's what drives the competition between AMD and Nvidia. At the end of the day, it's all about the numbers and the price. Nvidia, like you guys know, has been pretty much the king of the ring for a long time. AMD's the underdog. They're known to be the price people to give a lower price at just a slightly less performance. So, will you guys buy the AMD Vega Frontier? Or are you guys going to wait for the RX ones and hope that they will beat Nvidia at their own game? I really want to hear your comments because at the end of the day, that's what my videos are mostly about these days. I'm probing you guys. I'm trying to see what the feel of you guys, the public is on these subjects. So no, I mean, sometimes it feels like a little bit of hype. Maybe it is because hype kind of drives the enthusiasm between people to talk about these things and discuss them. So hey, let's have a discussion. Let's see your comments down below. Um, for you guys who are here in America, happy 4th of July. I know in Australia it's already Wednesday, but for you guys here in America, hey, happy 4th. Peace out. We're here for you.